Dr. Agarwal and uh, all the dignitaries on the dais, a very good afternoon to all the members present over here. Uh, first and foremost, I prefer to be called as a chef, Atul Gokhale, not doctor. I think they have changed it over here, uh, but we would keep it that way. So topic, food, is always an interesting topic for everybody uh, across the world, across the humanity, even for animals. Uh, if I can have this slide. So as we go along, today the topic is in uh, food as medicine in modern times. Food has always been treated in across uh, the entire world in pre-ancient times as uh, medicine. And it was always taken with a pinch of salt, always taken it uh, with a very uh, controlled manner to ensure that optimum health is achieved. Today I'm going to focus more on the uh, Indian traditional, uh, Indian ins insights from the Indian traditional cuisine. And the reason for that is essentially uh, we have a very rich culture and I would like uh, the members over here to also understand that we generally in India uh, have been a part of it every day of our life. Our kitchens, our, uh, our, our, the way of cooking, celebrating, uh, treating others have always had some reason behind it. The festivals, the feasting, the fasting, have always been a part of our life where we have always reached to a state where uh, the food is treated as a medicine. Whether it is by season you eat, whether it is by uh, the region you eat, whether it is by the weather or rutu as we call it, we have always been following that uh, in our context. So before, I, I think there's a glitch over here. But as I just go forward, I'll, uh, maybe I'll ask uh, many of you today uh, follow what we call as the food fads. Food fads have been the uh, biggest challenges we as culinary professionals face today. For the simple reason, everybody wants new things, everybody wants newer aspects of life, uh, newer food cho uh, choices, and this ensures this ensures that uh, we today uh, have multiple way of making things. But are we actually making the foods right? I'll give you some combinations. Ice cream with french fries. Ice cream topped with prawns. Chicken with coke. Or for that matter, we in Indian street food, today everybody wants the highest grating of cheese on our, grated, on our, cheese, uh, on our street foods. Whether it is a pav bhaji, whether it is a pani puri, or whether it is any kind of in food. You just go across the street food and you will find the person just doing the grating of the cheese and doing this and then serving it to you. Wow, what a wonderful food. I don't think so. So I'll just begin with that and I've just given you the examples of what I was talking about. Ice cream topped with shrimps or prawns. Coke and chicken. Ice cream and fries. And finally cheese in all sorts of the Indian street foods. I, as a chef, have also gone through these. But today I realize, oh, okay, it's not coming. Put it, slide soft. Okay. Nehru, who did slide changes? Can you do it? Okay. Just do next, all four slides, please. All four inserts. Sorry for this glitch, uh, but this is a part of it. As I was talking about, yeah, uh, cheese in all sorts of uh, street foods, and finally some of the weirdest food combinations and trends emerging across the world are all a part of this. Go to the next point. Actually, as has been said by so many food historians, you are what you eat. And actually, you are what you eat, isn't it? And that's why today we all need to know the different aspects of the changing dietetics in today's world. The changing face of dietetics because of living in a globalized world and people living behind the codes and conducts of eating has not just led to the degradation of human health, it has also given birth to diseases that didn't seem to exist a few decades ago. Sure, evolution happens, but aren't we supposed to leave what's bad and adopt what's good or better as we evolve? That doesn't happen in this. The lifespan, next slide please. The lifespan has increased, the quality of life has decreased. So has 
the metabolic and the immune diseases have increased a lot in our lifestyle. What's happening, unfortunately, is the exact opposite. While average lifespan have increased over the past 100 years, they've also been degraded in the quality of life and an alarming rise in the metabolic disorders and autoimmune diseases. The cause for most of who remains unknown for modern perspective. Next slide. The traditional Indian food systems, as we talk about and as I propagate, and thanks to Dr. Rajiv, we have always been propagating that in our uh, culinary arts school also, has always talked about them. Insert, insert, please. Yeah. Indigenous food systems offer today a logical and a scientific approach of determining correct diet based upon an individual's constitution. This approach is quite different from the Western view of a blended or a balanced diet, eating everything from the basic food groups like meat, dairy, fruits, grains, and vegetables on a daily basis. I'm sure my nutrition friends over here will disagree to it, but uh, I go to a different level. Today's presentation is all about food incompatibilities and their effects on human health. And my present presentation today as a chef who himself got trained in these incompatibilities, and I'll give you one example. I was always taught to make a white sauce with milk and salt. Milk and salt are never compatible. But that's what the Western cuisine has always talked about, creating a bechamel sauce using milk and salt. However, let's move forward. Our cooking systems, no, I think you wait. <laughs> Our cooking and eating systems have evolved over the centuries and uh, through the cultures of various communities and has incorporated what is best based on an individual constitution or what we call in Ayurveda as Prakriti. That is why we don't have fixed menus, standard menus, but it varies from home to home, region to region, and made upon by the resourceful people and their diversified habits for foods for therapeutic methods in healthcare. Now you can move forward. <laughs> plan is not really sufficient to lead us to the path of good health. What we are globally facing at the moment is a major challenge in the way we eat, the amount we eat, and the combinations make the way we digest the food. Go forward. Foods as a medicine has always been treated in our indigenous cooking systems. And let me tell you uh, the way details it has been worked out. Slide please. You guys need to move it. Eh? Yeah, one more. One more, that's it. Yeah. The food which we talk about today is the, uh, we eat the way, plays the most important part as because food is treated as medicine and two aspects to which are given, the ahar and an, that is the diet and the food. Healthy and nutritious f uh, mind and the body, it also nourishes both, all three of them. As uh, um, Girija also spoke about food being an important aspect for mental wealth and mental health and well-being, uh, so is the food. Food for the soul is what we call sometimes. And chicken soup for the soul, you must have all heard about the stories of uh, it under there. We do not discriminate on foods being on good or bad. Please move. Instead, Ayurveda emphasizes on various factors that influence food, like the biological properties, origin, environmental factors, seasons, preparations, freshness, and provides a logical explanation on how to balance foods according to one's dosh, or constitution, and physical needs. It also describes what kind of work you carry out, and whether the food which you are eating is suitable for the work, whether it is physical, mental, or any other kind of work you carry out that requires that type of food. Going further, as for the existing literatures and Indian civilizations have always followed, still follow, the quality of foods as the best natural medicine since the Vedic, Vedic ages. Charak Samhita, 
a codified treatise on general systems of medicine mentions that it is not only on how and what we eat that makes a difference in our health, but rather how it is prepared. And that's where a role of a good cook, whether it is a housewife at home or whether it is a chef in a professional organization, comes to the fore. Next slide, please. I will talk today about the theory of Viruddha Ahar. Can you please move forward, guys? No, move forward, move forward. You have not been moving forward. Yeah. I will talk about the theory of Viruddha Ahar. Yat kinchita dravyam dosham utkleshi yantu natu nirhita tata sarvada viruddha. Ashtanga rudaya sushrut seven. That which augments or dislodges that doshas but is neither accepted by the body nor expelled outside the body, thus leading to the vitiation or the toxicity of dhatus and tissues is considered to be virudh against your nature. The theory of incompatibility of food can be traced in charak, which augments arguments uh, or uh, augments to the and dislodges the doshas, but is neither accepted by the body or expelled outside the body, thus leading to the vitiation of dhatus, and is considered virudh in Ayurveda. Move forward. Every food has three components: the ras, that means the taste, virya, the potency and the vipaka, which means after digestion, energy level. All of the foods items are considered to be equivalent to what human beings think their own nature is. So every food item also has its own nature. What is to be constituted as a part of your diet will only be decided once you know your constitution. Move forward. When two or three different types of uh, own taste, rasa, or potency, and digestive um, put together, food substances of different ras, viri, and vipaka are combined together, agni can be overloaded, inhibiting the enzyme system, resulting in the production of certain toxins, substances which can neither be digested by the body nor can be thrown out of the body. Take example. I've seen many a times people overeating on the cheese or combining milk and curd together, or eating curd in the night. The kind of, uh, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, indigestion happens on the next day results from the kind of food which you have ingested the previous evening or night. Move forward. Viruddha Ahara essentially interrupts the metabolism of tissues, inhibits the process of formation of new tissues, and has properties opposite to that of the tissues. And hence, anything which is not part of your constitution and you're still eating it, causes the discomfort, the indigestion. Move forward. Viruddhahar is just not restricted to combinations, but it has 18 different types of combination which I have mentioned over here. Just quickly go through them. Desh Viruddha, Kala Viruddha, Agni Viruddha, Matra Viruddha, Satmya Viruddha, Dosh Viruddha, Sanskar Viruddha, Virya Viruddha, Koshta Viruddha, Avastha Viruddha, Kram Viruddha, Parihar Viruddha, Upachar Viruddha, Sanyog Viruddha, Rutta Viruddha, Sampata Viruddha and Vidhi Viruddha. All of these are what can be opposite to your nature. And it is very important and important for everybody of us to know here that anything which is not part of your constitution and if you are still eating it, it will lead to a lot of inflammations amongst your body. Let's see the examples now. I'm sorry, I have to move forward. Yeah. Move forward, please. Yeah. Avastha Viruddha. I'll just give you an example of Avastha Viruddha. Like, for example, Let's see the example of this, like eating dry, raw, food, cold, uncooked foods when you are severely exhausted is an example of avastha viruddha tiredness coming from overactivity or disease leads to aggravation of vata, thus putting you at the risk of getting afflicted with vat disorder, gas, gastric troubles. Next, if you forcibly eat something, 
I think many of you have must have gone through it in the younger days when mother must have fed you uh, something which are not liked by you. It leads to, uh, it clearly is not something and it's called as a rit viruddha and it's, as it's going to lead to continual mild indigestion. I've seen this in my son. When he was young, we were telling them to drink milk every day and that as an Indian family, every single time you are always asked that child should be fed with milk, a glass of milk every day, morning, night, morning, evening, morning, evening. And he always used to be uh, shunning that away and always had disorders, especially indigestion, diarrheas. Go forward. Desha Viruddha. If you eat dry foods in dry regions, Suppose you are in Jaipur, a very dry, arid region, and if you dr eat dry foods over there, and excessively oily foods in humid regions, it is called Desh Virudh. What are the consequences? We can talk it sometime later on part of it. Moving further, Kala Virudh, season-wise. If you are in summer, and if you eat hot, pungent foods, or cold, dry foods in winter, it is against the constitution of your body. Next slide, please. If you eat hot, pungent foods in summer and cold and dry foods in winter, it is also called Viruddha. Foods not cooked properly due to inappropriate eating methods, which we today see in most of the restaurants. You don't know what happens behind the restaurant in the kitchen. I am sure if you see, many of you will stop eating outside. Roasting, frying, baking. Of the food items which are not as per their nature can lead to so many different disorders, especially diabetic disorders. In fact, majority of the diseases have an inflammatory pathology. And that's what I was told, that there are several instances when these symptoms of the disease like pain and inflammation start disappearing gradually when the diet changes are made by restricting incompa incompatible foods and harmful foods. Despite modern medicine's claim of theory of incompatibility being unscientific, here are five modern concepts that can be closely related to the science of incompatibility. Number one, antagonism. Number two, free radical formation. Number three, allergies caused by certain foods. I'll come back to this later. This slide is a little faster. Chef, uh, run out of time. Can you Sorry, be a yeah, little just wrap it up. Quickly in two minutes. Yeah, so I think I'll go through this. Uh, three aspects, just go behind please, quickly. Go back, back. Back. Sorry, this glitch is causing me to have a disconcert with what I'm trying to do. Go back again. Back. Go back, 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 back. Again, back, yeah. So uh, going to the details of things like what exactly are the three aspects of uh, the cooking processes involved in our systems and they have been there for ages. Patra Shuddhi, Padartha Shuddhi, and Pak Shuddhi. Today in the modern kitchens, all three are considered to be sacrosanct. Patra Shuddhi is the purity of vessels. When we talk about purity of vessels, please slide move, please. Can I move? Yeah, I can move now. Purity of vessels actually causes a food to be pure in form of whatever they would be. I'll not read out through this because we have paucity of time. Padartha Shuddhi, purity of ingredients. And finally, Pak Shuddhi is purity in the cooking process. Examples are given over here, paucity of time, I cannot explain them much more in detail. But going forward, I would only say, just having the right food, go forward. Go forward. Last slide, please. Go forward. Yeah. Just having the right food is not enough. Right combinations along with correct proportions is vital for any individual today. 
Ayurveda has already described it. I am sure you all know the thali system, the laying of food items on our traditional system. Today we do it only on festivals, but it has always been a part of daily routine where you know what to lay where so that the way the right hand moves on the food plate, you would be able to eat them accordingly. Thank you very much.